Welcome to r slash confessions, where we get to hear the most disturbing confessions. Hey guys I just started an Amazon affiliate link so, if you want to help me be able to make better content please purchase something by classing the link in the description and purchasing anything. It won't cost you anything extra, and will really help build this community. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the video. I masturbate to pictures of Ben Shapiro almost every day, just because I know he would hate the idea of a male wanking to him. It's actually really difficult, because I don't find him sexually attractive in any way, and especially just his head shirts, but I have done it every day for about 2 years, because I found it funny at first but now I'm so used to it, that it makes me feel incomplete, if I don't do it every day. I was falsely accused of rape, and it ruined my life. Hello all, thanks in advance for reading I'll try to keep it not too long. When I was 15, I started dating this girl, let's call her Worm. I had just gotten out of a relationship, and it was sort of a rebound. Things were going great at first, then over time I began to grow apart from her. We didn't share many interests and just were not right for each other in my eyes. She on the other hand, was obsessed with me, saw me as the love of her life and her future husband etc etc. By the time I got enough balls to fully end it, about 8 months had passed. Within those 8 months I treated her with nothing but love and respect. After I broke up with her, she began to go insane, telling all her friends slash my friends that I was abusive slash beat her etc etc. Which never happened. This went on for a month or two with me having to deal with these false accusations every day. I, at this time had gotten back together with my ex from before I had dated Worm. At some point, it somehow got to a parent, who of course contacted the school slash cops. And that's when Worm gave her fake story saying I full force raped her on the couch, after everyone fell asleep at a party, that I left at 8pm. She got her friends who were there, to make cohabiting stories saying, that I was there, being weird with her etc. I was there with my girlfriend at the time, who didn't let me out of her sight. I won't get into the other holes in the story, because the whole thing is bs so itd take forever but this was enough for the police, to decide they had probable cause to charge me with rape at the age of 16, without hearing any other side of the story. My parents already knew about the rumors, but they then saw how serious this was, and that my life was at stake for something I didn't even do. We were not rich, but my parents paid thousands on thousands of dollars for a very good lawyer, to help me win the case. I was made fun of, and bullied by everyone, except my close friends at this point, as everyone blindly believed the accuser because, why would you make that up? Then even my close friends distanced themselves as they were starting to catch heat for even still being friends with me. We had all the evidence it didn't happen, where I was that day, her saying she misses me on text after the date I supposedly raped her, and she had nothing except her, and her friends stories. I clearly would have won the case, and after it had been stalled for over 8 months, she dropped the case, not forcing her to admit that she lied, and not facing any penalty. I also had very harsh rules for that whole time or else they could take me into custody, couldn't talk to girls under 18, even though I was 16, 9pm curfew, couldn't be in public without adult, who knew the accusation etc etc. I'm now 19 with severe social anxiety from the years of bullying and torment I received. I cannot make new friends because everyone that doesn't know me knows about me because of this. I hate that my parents had to spend 15k to defend from something that didn't even happen. Why the fuck does a 16 year old girl have the power to ruin my life? I'm a shell of my former self, physically and personality wise. I constantly smoke weed to forget about my problems and finally relax. She faced no punishment, and it fucking eats at me. Thanks so much for listening. Maybe this is the first step of moving forward. Wow I hope you're able to turn your life around opus. Good luck. I was kidnapped when I was 8 and held in captivity for 3 years. 26F. I was picked up by a stranger from school posing to be my dad's friend saying that he would drop me off to the airport to catch a flight with my dad. Not only did I actually have to travel with my dad that day, but this man somehow knew my dad was getting off early from work. He told me that morning and that he had to go fishing with his friend. He did this a lot. He told me that my dad sent him to pick me up and meet him directly at the airport. I believed him 
convince my teachers I knew him because I was excited to go the airport and left with him. I was held in captivity for 3 years. I was raped, beaten, starved 11 year old me had learned to make him trust me. It started with us going around in his car, although I had to sit in the back seat and stay quiet the whole time. He let me come into his kitchen and make food for myself. He let me clean his house. The day we went to feed the ducks at the park I ran. I ran as fast as my weak legs could carry me because of the crowd. I think he lost me. I begged a family for help, telling them I was kidnapped and I wanted to go home. I told them my name, my school's name and my parents' names. Long story short, they caught him, he killed himself. I was back with my dad, my sisters, my dogs. I'm now happily married to my wife of 4 years, still undergoing therapy, have a good job, and a baby on the way. Edit, I'm very sorry for the last line. I realize it doesn't end well for most, and I got lucky. But the only way I kept going, was telling myself I'm going to escape, and then I'm going to get better I'm going to love myself again I'm going to get past my trauma. Since this worked for me, I assumed saying it will end well would work for other people too. Of course it wasn't right though. My stepdad got in a fight to protect me, and I feel different about him now. Sorry if this doesn't belong here. I don't have anyone else I can tell. I'm 19 and a guy. My mom married my stepdad when I was 14, and we've always gotten along. My dad died when I was 11 and to be honest I'm still working through the relationship we had. I've always had this fantasy that he was an amazing dad, but if I'm honest he was abusive. He made me fight a 13 year old when I was 10. When I said I was scared he told me I was being a pussy. When I didn't win he was disappointed in me. When my mom married my stepdad we kept to ourselves at first, but he's honestly twice the man my dad was. It's hard to say that but it's true. The one thing he said to me before he married my mom was that he'd never hurt us and always protect us. It's been 5 years and he's kept his promise. He's always been amazing to my mom and me and I admit that he spoils me sometimes. He'll take care of my chores for me and gets me whatever I want, even if I don't ask him for it. If he hears me talking about something he'll just get it for me. He always asks if I have enough money and if I don't he'll transfer money into my checking account. We don't really talk about personal stuff, but he's always said I can talk to him about anything whenever I feel like it. Today we were at the store and some older guy accused me of giving him a dirty look while we were in the parking lot. I didn't know what he was talking about and told him I didn't even look at him, but he shoved me to the ground. My stepdad jumped in so fast that I didn't even see what happened. I heard him hit the guy and when I got up the asshole was on the ground looking scared and holding his nose. My stepdad was shouting at him in a scary voice you don't ever put your hands on him. He helped me up and the guy got back in his car and sped away. After that he didn't want me to leave his sights in the store. The whole way home he kept apologizing that he didn't step in earlier and telling me he never wanted me to see him fight. I've never even seen get mad or raise his voice. It was scary but it also made me feel so weird. I can't explain it, but it feels like I finally know how much he loves me. We never say it to each other, but I always knew how he feels. When we got home I told him I love him for the first time and he gave me the hardest hug I've ever had, and I almost started crying. TL, doctor, my stepdad fought someone to protect me, and it opened my eyes about our relationship edit, I'm overwhelmed by all the nice comments. I wish I had time to answer them all, before I go to work, but I'll be late if I do. Thank you to everyone for the comments and award. Not getting married, was the best decision I ever made. Me, 29 meters, and my partner, 28F, met 8 years ago just before I graduated, and we clicked almost immediately. A few months after I graduated, she and her 3 year old son moved in with me. Right after graduating, I started making low 6 figures working for a large bank, and then went on to do my own thing having a very lucrative career. My income was more than enough to support the 3 of us. So I was comfortable letting her stay home, work on her hobbies and volunteering. I thought our relationship was going well. She's been pressing me to get married for the last 4 years, but the time never seemed right because I wanted to get my own business off of the ground first, and she seemed comfortable with that. 
Last week, she asked me what I thought about open relationships and whether we could open ours. I know why she asked, I spend a lot of time traveling for work and she probably wants some action on the side while I'm away working, hell she might already have something on the side. I knew right then we were done, but I needed to find out how screwed I was before pulling the trigger. I set up a meet with a lawyer my friend knew, and I have to admit I was scared. I'd heard stories of how men were ached over the coals in divorces all the time. So I walked into the lawyer's office expecting to lose 50% of everything and more. At first things looked bleak, but then he asked how long we had been married. When I told him that we weren't married, he called me the luckiest mf to ever walk into his office. Common law marriage doesn't exist here which means that when we split up, she gets precisely nothing, zero, zip, nada. I'm trying to figure out the best time to tell her we are done but that's all I have to say. Not getting married was the smartest decision I've ever made. As a black man, if I ever find myself walking on a quiet sidewalk at night and see a white woman, I will immediately move to the other side of the street so as to not seem threatening. There is a reason for everything. I will never forget how this white woman made me feel. April 2016 10 p.m. at night and I'd get a little hungry and decide to head to the nearest store to grab some food. It would be closer to walk than to drive, so I head out the door and proceed to walk the two blocks to the store. The streets are quiet and empty, and to the far distance, I see a white woman park her car and walk to her apartment in trance. She sees me from the corner of her eye and I can tell she's nervous. She proceeds to put the key in the door lock to open, but by this time she is shaking and drops the key. By then, I've gotten closer and am only about 20 feet away from her. She looks at me terror stricken and begins to scream from the top of her lungs, banging on the door for help. I proceed to walk right past her and head to the store. I didn't do anything. I was just a black man walking to get some food. And for some reason, I couldn't help but think I was the one in the wrong. I felt guilty for making her feel so scared. From then on, anytime I come across a woman at night, I walk to the other side of the street so she feels safe and isn't threatened by me. It's sad this is what I have to resort to but until black people stop being labeled and stereotyped, myself along with other black men in this country will have to resort to similar measures. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it please consider subscribing as it really motivates me to, to make more of these videos. Have an amazing day.